This is strong draft class. It is absolutely stacked. Bang. And May will keep it and coming to the zone for Drake May. It's caught. It's Harrison. It's touchdown, Marvin Harrison Jr. Backed up and taken down by Jared Curse. It's broken up by Terry and Arnold. Well, the field and it's intercepted. Arnold. Daniels. Back by right corner of the end zone. Drops it. He's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Dallas Turner chased him down to the end zone. Neighbors holds it in again to the 10 to the 5. And Williams takes a shot up the field and has Washington. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mock Draft Live, presented by NerdWallet. I'm Colleen Wolf here with Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, Rhett Lewis. We uh, are so excited about the draft. We can't believe that it's coming up this week. And my burning question, DJ, is are you going to hold a puppy again? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, the puppies are coming back, but I'm going to maybe take some precautions uh, this time. Yeah. So I'm going to be careful this time. Puppy right. pads everywhere. Yeah, puppy I might take a puppy. Everywhere. I don't know what's yeah. going to happen. You know, Colleen, the last time we were all together, speaking of drama, yeah. right, the last time we were all together making picks, we had rogue fire alarms going yeah. off when I picked a certain quarterback to the Vikings. True. So yeah. <laughs> who knows what's in store for us today? You know what we do? We face adversity and we just keep Let's on moving through it. That's what everyone does with their mock drafts. That's what everyone does with life. Yeah. And guys, here we go. This is our final mock Come draft on. together. Mm. You three are going to be the GMs today. You're going to pick the first that. round. I, uh, along with the viewers, will judge your every single <laughs> move. Yes. So Godspeed, everybody. Let's get this thing started. I'll start us off first, though, because this oh. is basically, we, we essentially know that this is going to happen. The pick <laughs> feels like it's already in. Caleb Williams to the Bears. It feels like we may even see a contract signed before the draft at this point. Yeah. Um, but if the Bears don't pick Caleb, it will be the biggest plot twist in draft history. I'm here for the drama and the chaos if it happens, but this feels pretty chalk. So with that, DJ, you're up for Washington, who they just did a group quarterback visit, which love I love the strategy yes. of that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bring everybody in. Let's sort it all out. Put them all out there at the dinner table, and we'll decide who we want to pick. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the guy I've had the whole time, and that's Drake May. I know there's a lot of talk and a lot of chatter about Jaden Daniels being this pick. I've just felt like this was Dan Quinn's Matt Ryan. I, I like the fit there in Washington. I like that big, sturdy size as well. So I'll go Drake May to the Commanders. Look, that's a nice pick, and I, I love Drake May going to the Commanders. And so I have an opportunity to maybe think about the New England Patriots at three. Yes. And I now get a chance to take the quarterback that I've always wanted, which is Jaden Daniels. Talk about a dual threat playmaker, being able to put him up in Foxborough. Let's be honest, the last couple years in New England, not a lot of juice. When now you have a quarterback that brings the electricity, they're going to be a lot different than they've been in the past. I think we should be excited about what is to come in New England with Jaden Daniels at QB1. So quarterbacks go one, two, three, but not one, Two, three, oh. four. Mm. Popular trade destination there, Cardinals, but Trader Monty instead this year decides players over picks, and he goes and gets one of the very best players in this class and the top receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr. All the body control and smoothness you love from his dad, the Hall of Famer, but in a bigger frame. Let's not overthink this thing. Let's get the best wide out to help Kyler Murray. But Rhett, I'm sure you were waiting for your phone to ring. I was. Like if trades yeah. were allowed in yeah, this draft. Yeah, I mean, we're going to listen. Colleen. You know, we're you have listen. to. You have to just like do your due diligence. That's this time of year. Uh, let's talk a little Instant Impact presented by Microsoft Surface. Going back to my one and only pick in this whole thing, Caleb Williams to the Bears. <laughs> DJ, what makes him such a generational talent and what actually are the reasonable expectations for him as a rookie since those expectations are so high? Yeah, first of all, Colleen, it's going to be unbelievable when they do these mock draft scores and you beat everybody, the 5,000 people that have <laughs> done you. it. Because you you 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. It's genius. I love that ratio. Absolutely genius. Uh, but to me, when I look at Caleb, the ability is, is obvious when you watch him of all the different things he can do. He expands your playbook. He can drive the ball. He can throw with touch. You've seen him when he's had time, the ability to get through progressions. You saw it a lot more in 22 than you did 
on 23 where the supporting cast eroded around him. But the ability is all there. It, it's all there for you to see. And then it's about the situation that you go into. And I think this is an excellent situation for a rookie quarterback to walk into. An offensive line they've been developing over the last couple years. You bring in Keenan Allen to pair up with DJ Moore. I think Caleb Williams hits the ground running. I expect him to have a, a solid rookie campaign. And I expect them to be a playoff contending team. Yeah, they certainly should be in the mix. They bring veteran wide receivers. Keenan Allen joins DJ Moore. You have Cole Komet on the inside. Gerald Everett also being another tight end and to be able to help them. I expect he does get off to a fast start. He doesn't have to really do anything but to be a pass first point guard. And if he's able to do that, continue to avoid the turnovers that really weren't a big part of his game at USC outside of the fumbles. This guy should be terrific. I think he's going to not only be the offensive rookie of the year, but he's certainly going to help this team be in the conversation as a playoff contender. Mm, yeah, that playmaking ability, it's kind of why he draws a lot of those Mahomes comparison sure. because of the off-platform throws and being able to make something out of nothing. Red, I got a softball for you. Are you ready for oh, it? I, I love that. Yeah. Will Caleb get the Bears to the playoffs <laughs> next season? I'm going to hit this one right out of the park then. Great. Okay, Colleen. I mean, yes. Oh, yes. Cool. The Chicago Bears are going to be playoff bound with Caleb Williams if the Bears continue to use the rest of their draft to support him. Mm. That means pick number nine, which is coming up in five picks for us. I, I just I don't think with a player that you're going to invest in this significantly as a number one pick, you have to continue to put the pieces around him. Yes, you've already done that with Keenan Allen. Mm. You've got DJ Moore already there, but continue to support him, uh, whether that's offensive line help to allow him to sit back there and make some throws, or whether that's you know a guy like Roma Dunze or, or the best wide receiver available there at nine. Let's give him every opportunity to get out on the field and to be successful early. Yeah, it's going to be tough, though, because that yeah, division that is was tough. You know, mm -hmm. it's gonna be no, tough. go ahead, Buck. No, it's going to be tough with Detroit and Green Bay. They're coming. Minnesota has a talented team. We expect a lot from the Bears, but you're right. They got to continue to build around Caleb Williams. Yeah, Buck, I was just going to just tag on Rhett real quick with, you know, that was the most vintage Rhett thing I've ever seen. The power statement, the yes, you know, says yeah. it with his yeah. chest. <laughs> yes. With, and then with the, the if, fire. The the if, 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 shortly yes. after the power statement, yes. we get all all these yes. qualifiers of, of yes. whether or not this on, is going to happen. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest and It's move just on. one qualifier. We haven't gotten to the ninth pick yet. This so. is what happens when we've all worked together for 10 years. We know yeah. exactly That's what it. everyone's going to do before they even do it. Um, okay, you know what? With that, let's move to pick five. DJ, right. you're picking for the Chargers. Yep, and uh, look, Charger fans have been mad at me this whole process, so why change now? Uh, <laughs> let's go Joe Alt at the tackle position. I, I know people understand I, they've got a left tackle. I get it. Rashawn Slater is, is an all-pro caliber player. Trey Pipkins, I don't think, is a long-term answer at right tackle. Now you've got Joe Alt to really fortify this offensive <clears> line. They want to run the ball better. They've got to get better up front, and this is a huge building block for them moving forward. Yeah, huge building block. I would expect Jim Harbaugh's first pick to be someone at the line of scrimmage. Joe Alt, the best offensive tackle in the game, certainly helps kind of help them usher in a new identity. And speaking of identity, I think the New York Giants want to have a new identity. They don't want to be the blue collar offense that they've been. Let's juice it up. Let's add a playmaker in Malik Neighbors. We can talk about whether they need to get a quarterback eventually for Daniel Jones, but let's give Daniel Jones every opportunity to succeed. Give him a big time playmaker like Malik Neighbors. He can make the game easy for Daniel Jones because he can turn the short passes into big mm. games. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, he puts points on the board, which helps that offense go, go, go. Okay, Buck, let's pause right there and stick with the Giants here because Daniel Jones Paid last offseason, then he was hurt, just finished with two touchdowns, six interceptions, not the vibe he was hoping no. for, or Giants mm -hmm. fans in general, definitely not that front office. So what now, DJ, is the level of urgency for New York to draft a first-round quarterback, considering the GM Joe Shane came out and said that they're under no pressure to draft a said quarterback in this first round? Well, I think they're in a love-like situation here. If you love one of these guys, the, I don't think Daniel Jones' presence precludes you from taking them. And that means even trading up. If you could trade up, if, if somehow Jane Daniels goes two and Drake May's sitting there at three and you could work a, a trade there with New England, absolutely, I think you're open to that. But I don't feel like they're in such dire straits that they have to, to, to make things happen and force things if they don't absolutely love the player. I, I just don't believe in that. I don't think their back's up against that particular wall.
Yeah, I, look, I think you're you're spot on there, DJ. I mean, like, I, you know, this is a what have you done for me lately league, and I think we do forget because of the the struggles the Giants had in 23 that Daniel Jones was a big piece of a team that went to the playoffs and won a playoff game. Uh, you know, in Brian Dable's first year, I think you you can get back to that sort of contention for the Giants with a pick like Malik Neighbors at number six, the number one wide receiver that the Giants and Daniel Jones have been craving right since he's been there and since they let uh, Odell Beckham Jr. leave for Cleveland in that trade. So that that's kind of my thought on let's let's support Daniel Jones here. And that's kind of a theme I think that we're going to see unfold in this draft. Yeah, I think it is, as you say. How can we evaluate a quarterback when we don't like the pieces around the quarterback? We don't know how good the quarterback can be until we give him a legitimate chance. And that would be whether it's Daniel Jones or any of these young quarterbacks that would come in. They just don't have enough firepower right now in the offensive lineup. Wide receiver, running back, offensive line, they have to attack all of those areas. So let's attack those areas, and then we get a fair evaluation of whether Daniel Jones needs to continue to be the QB1. Yeah, it makes sense for them to say what quarterback is the right quarterback instead of what's the right quarterback right now. Like, they yeah. need to get this right in the mm -hmm. long run. All right, let's keep this thing moving. Rhett, you're up with the Titans at 7. Okay, so we're going to go with the tackle here, and we're going to support our young quarterback by not get hit as much, Will Levis. So we're going to give him Olu Fashionu, who, Colleen, if we were sitting here last Last year on Mock Draft Live and Olu was uh, decided to come out rather than go back to Penn State, we'd have probably been talking about him in a similar spot right here Ooh. as a 19 year old. Got another year under his belt, maybe didn't play as well this year, but I think with Brian Callahan's dad, there's the offensive line coach. I think you feel pretty good about mm. the talent that Olu Fashion has. I, I like it. Uh, go ahead and address that position as a, as a need. Speaking of needs, how about we get to the Atlanta Falcons? I've been putting pass rushers to them in the first round for it feels like a decade, and I feel like eventually I'm going to be right, so I'm going to stick with it here, and I'm going to go with Dallas Turner, giving them some big-time juice off the edge, the length, the ability to bend and finish. Um, it's sorely needed for this group, and I'm going to say this year they finally do it. I can't believe it. I'll, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, right. but it better happen this year. No more <laughs> offensive skill position players for the uh, Falcons in that first round. They got to go defense. So eight picks in, and here's where we stand. Quarterbacks going one, two, three, and Williams, May, and Daniels. And then we have Marv Harrison Jr. teaming up with Kyler Murray. The Giants pass on a quarterback and go Malik Neighbors at wide receiver. And Jim Harbaugh, that era begins in L.A. with offensive tackle Joe Alt. The Falcons, they then select our first defender in the draft, and it feels like their first pass rusher in so long, Dallas Turner from Alabama. All right, good news. Mock Draft Live has more to give, everybody. Yes. We'll let our GMs take a little breather here, a little break. Uh, find out where J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr., and Bo Nix all land, and if you agree with where they went. More to come right after this. The 2024 NFL Draft, it's basically here already. Catch all seven rounds, three days live from Detroit starting Thursday on NFL Network and NFL Plus. Will Ryan Poles and the Bears shock the world? <laughs> who's trading up? Who's trading back? Build and who the makes drama. the craziest pick all night? It all starts this Thursday, 8 Eastern. In the meantime, we'll continue mocking Bucky. You're up now for the Bears. Speaking of Ryan Poles. Yes, it's been a lot of fun. So we took Caleb Williams. So now let's make sure that we go and get a pass catch. Another Thank playmaker. You Thank you, Bucky. Rome Adunze. I thought DJ make grabbing with the Atlanta Falcons because they love pass catch. Oh, yeah. He lands in Chicago, which is perfect. <laughs> I now have an opportunity to put a three wide package with Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Rome Adunze, Cole Commit, and tight end. I can't imagine how you would handle that. Let's go. Well, and DJ, you'll be happy to know that now I can erase the if from my Bears playoff there scenario you go. Oh, because Bucky, thank you, you, Colleen. That's Bucky great. did, in yes. fact, give him a, give the Bears a pass catcher <laughs> to support Caleb. I love it. All right, that moves us to the Jets at number 10. Talking about supporting a quarterback. That's what we've talked about a lot with Aaron Rodgers here by going to get him a tackle. I like giving him Talisa Fuaga from Oregon State, but I think this also makes Brees Hall very happy. Got a guy who brings a little bit of nasty to the offensive line. I think he could ultimately end up winning that starting right tackle spot or you can move him into guard to try to get your best five out on the field, ultimately provide some depth to those aging veteran tackles that they ended up bringing in in free agency. Yeah, I'm a big Fuaga fan, so I like that fit there with the Jets. Now I get to Minnesota. Remember, we haven't done trades. Mm -hmm. So in this scenario, J.J. McCarthy just is right there for them to pick. Wow. We've been talking forever about the Minnesota Vikings 
moving up to get the fourth quarterback, whether that's with Arizona at four or the Chargers at five. In this exercise, they just stick and pick. He falls right into their lap. They are going to add a quarterback. I feel confident in that. And this, to me, would be a rather uh, uh, lovely scenario, put it that way, for them not to have to part with picks and still get their guy. Well, you got to love that because I think J.J. McCarthy would work well. I have an opportunity to sit behind Sam Donald before taking over Kevin O'Connell, that system, the playmakers around him. It works. You're the Minnesota Vikings. You love that situation. So Jared Here Verse, Buck. Here we go. So Jared Verse going to the Denver Broncos. Sean Payton may be looking for the quarterback, but right in front of him, J.J. McCarthy goes. So now he has to turn to the defense. Jared Verse is that power rusher that they want on the edges. Let's get Vance Joseph, a defensive disruptive playmaker that can help this defense get the ball back so they can find a way to win games in a tough and competitive AFC West. I feel like that, that 12 pick with the Broncos is a real wild card. Where are they going to go? Mm -hmm. Is the quarterback they want going to be there? Uh, but Jared Verse certainly makes a lot of sense there. Let's move to the Raiders at number 13, and I'm giving him Michael Penix Jr. here from Washington. The arm talent is intoxicating. Penix's confidence to deploy that big left arm down the field is unwavering, and the athleticism he showcased at his pro day uh, makes the draft profile for Michael Penix, I don't know how you can look at it as anything other than appealing. So I feel like Michael Penix was born to be a Raider. Let's push this thing down the field. Rhett right now is um, drunk off Penix uh, potential go. with his arm. Uh, I love yes. that. Let's yeah. have it. Intoxicating. <laughs> yes. Well, we talked about the fact that there are no trades in this mock, but Thursday is reality, and in reality, mm. there will be trades. So teams most likely to trade into the top five and draft a quarterback. DJ, who's making the moves? All right, I might surprise you with this one because I believe when you look at the city in which they play, the division with, with which they're in, the conference yeah. with mm -hmm. which they're in, I don't think that Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Menchu excite me if I'm Tom Telesco <laughs> at this point in time or if I'm Antonio mm -hmm. Pierce. And I know Antonio Pierce has a connection with Jaden Daniels going back to the Arizona State days. Yeah. So I'm going to say the Raiders. We've been talking about all these other teams moving up. I could make a strong case that this should be the most motivated team to make a run, and especially if somehow Drake May does go two, and Jaden Daniels is there with the Patriots, Elliot Wolf says we're open for business. Uh, well, I'd be there knocking at on the door if, if I were the Raiders. Yeah, the Raiders should be aggressive. They need to find a QB one to compete in a division that is loaded with quarterback play. But how about the Minnesota Vikings? The Minnesota Vikings have to get into the mix. This division is becoming super competitive. You got Jerry Goff in Detroit. You have Jordan Love, who looks like an all-star. We're yeah. now talking about Caleb Williams getting the uh, uh, the Monstars playing with him in Chicago. So the Vikings <laughs> got to find their guy. So move up into the top five. Find a way to get a franchise quarterback that can help them compete. Uh, with these monsters that are uh, being assembled in the NFC. Well, new version, Monstars of the Midway right there in Chicago. <laughs> I like that. Look, Bucky, I find it hard to disagree with you. Uh, we've been talking about the Vikings, you know, potential to move up, whether it's four or whether it's five, to go get the fourth quarterback. Look, I, I feel like, you know, when you say that out loud, you're like, man, for the fourth quarterback, we're going to give up mm -hmm. two future ones, that 23rd pick in, in something else. Like, man, it, it's a lot, but if you love the quarterback, it doesn't matter. If you view the quarterback as your franchise guy for the next decade plus, then you make the move to go get it. And and so I could certainly see them, you know, feeling like JJ McCarthy was that guy and, and the Vikings feel like a team certainly possible to move into the top five. Guys, put, let's put ourselves in the place of the family in Las Vegas that says, we can go watch you two at the Sphere, or we can go watch Gardner <laughs> Minshew. Like, this is not happening. They are getting a quarterback. They are yeah. going to move up. They're in Las Vegas. They need somebody to put on the billboard here. Everybody's yeah. still drinking since because I gave them Michael Penix. They're good. <laughs> exactly. They're good. Well, let me tell you, there's a fish show now go. that's going to be there. So go. that's going to involve some other things, too. Hey, speaking of quarterbacks, we're already at five in today's mock. No surprise. Caleb Williams to the Bears at one, followed by Drake May to Washington, Jaden Daniels to the Patriots, and then the Vikings land their Kirk Cousins replacement in J.J. McCarthy. McCarthy at 11, not having to move because we had no trades in this mock. And then at 13, Michael Penix Jr. with that arm heads Let's to go. Vegas. So the only real way to kind of sort through all of this, it's a quarterback cluster buster, obviously. I'm going to give you the scenario. You guys give me the quarterback, okay? Mm -hmm. DJ, I'll start with you. You need one drive with the game on the line. Who's your guy? 
Oh, I'm going to take Caleb Williams. I mean, this is uh, that's an easy one for me. <laughs> I, I've got somebody who can extend drives with his legs when needed. He's shown that uh, throughout his career. Go get a first down with your legs. He can hit the home run ball, so we have a quick drive. Or he can be accurate and fit the ball in tight windows once we get into the red zone where we need to score the, the winning touchdown. So to me, I'm going to go Caleb Williams on that answer. Okay, I'm wondering if Caleb Williams is going to be the answer to all of these questions. It might not <laughs> help us sort through these quarterbacks, but Buck, yeah. one must-win game, high stakes here. Uh, what do you say? Oh, this is easy. This goes to J.J. McCarthy. J.J. Okay. McCarthy is the winningest quarterback coming into this situation. He finished his career at Michigan 27-1. and one. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I take a winner? Because... That's what we're talking about. We're talking about winning games. Yeah. Does and he so get his defense we can talk like his about, run game too? Oh, well, that doesn't matter, all that stuff. I know that <laughs> when J.J. McCarthy takes the snap, more likely than not, we're winning the game. Over 90% winning percentage during his time at Michigan. And we can talk about, is he a game manager? Is he a playmaker? Yada, yada, yada. I do know this. He's a winner. And if we're talking about winning a one game scenario, I'm going to go with the best winner. Okay. That's J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy. I like it. It's also a different answer than Caleb Williams, so well, like it. Uh -huh. How about this one? Last one. <laughs> Bring us Red. back. Bring us back. Red. Here we go. Bring us back. One final game-winning play in a pressure cooker yeah. scenario. Let's say final seconds left in the fourth quarter. It's a snow game, a win and in scenario. Maybe the, the head coaches hate each other. Ooh, Just really like painting this. a picture here. What do you say? Pressure cooker. Uh, Michael Pratt. Drum roll. Wait, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. I am going to go. I do, I do like Michael Pratt, by the way. But I am going to go with yeah. Caleb Williams in this scenario because I feel like whether it was the first quarter or the fourth quarter, he approached every play like the game was on the line. Yes, looked for the home run ball quite a bit. Maybe we'd like to see him, mm -hmm. you know, play like the game wasn't on the line uh, every single time. Mm -hmm. Take some of those check downs, which lead to first downs, which lead to touchdowns. But because he can do that, I have the ultimate confidence in putting the ball in Caleb Williams' hands to go win a game with one play. And look, he kind of had to do that a lot. He's got a lot of experience doing that uh, with the way his defense put him in some adverse situations at USC. Maybe this is a game against the Lions okay, uh, for a chance talking. at a postseason I mean, Division title on the line. Exactly. I just don't know why you wouldn't want a quarterback that wins almost 97% of his games. I, I, that's, that's me. I mean, you have a point. You can't argue with uh, math. TCU's so. on the schedule. Yeah, that's I mean, right. that's it. Uh, yeah. Just TCU. DJ, wow. let's go to wow. your pick. 14, you're up my friend with the Saints. Yeah, look, Rhett's got us so far off track. I'm going to be quick on this. <laughs> they need a tackle. J.C. Latham is as talented as any tackle in this draft. They solve that problem right here with the 14th pick with Latham. Ooh, I like that pick. And so now I have an opportunity. I'm Chris Ballard leading the Indianapolis Colts. And we have an opportunity to go get the best cornerback on the board. Quinion Mitchell, come on down from Toledo. Not that far away, really. He can just mm -hmm. kind of come over a little bit. And the reason why is because when you look at him on tape, he has all the things that you want in a top cornerback in terms of instincts, awareness, physicality, toughness, turns and transitions. He has all that. But more importantly, we had a chance to see him test. He's a high uh, in athlete. And we think about Chris Ballard, what they brought over the last couple years. They want freak athletes that also are good players. Let's bring him in to the mix. Yeah, I like it. They're uh, continuing to beef up that defense uh, there in Indianapolis. And I'm going to go with the 16th pick here with the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know if campus housing is still going to be available for Troy no. Fontano, but the good news <laughs> is he is going to get that U-Haul in-town rate. That's great. Um, moving there from uh, the campus of Washington to Seattle. And look, I, I, you know, they've got two tackles, young tackles and mm -hmm. Lucas and Cross that they've had there that have done some good things. I think Fatano could move inside to guard, mm -hmm. maybe even center, and just ultimately make this offensive line a, a lot better, create some more holes for Kenneth Walker and company, and provide some protection for Gino. Yeah, short commute for yes. Fatano, unlike yes. your commute, uh, oh, Rhett, today. Yeah, mm -hmm. trouble. That was uh, trouble. a little bit longer. <laughs> a thousand miles. Okay, so <laughs> the picks are in for the top of the first round. Here we have 9 through 16. The Bears take Rome. Madunze to pair with Caleb Williams. Two more quarterbacks get the call. J.J. McCarthy to Minnesota and Michael Penix Jr. to Vegas. Quinion Mitchell, our first corner selected, and he starts his NFL career as an Indianapolis Colt. Still to come, the rest of the first round where things become a little unpredictable. Brock Bowers still waiting on a team, and who will the Cowboys take? Plus, the fantasy footballers stop by to dish out some dream fantasy landing spots. That's next on Mock Draft Live, presented by NerdWallet.
Welcome back to Mock Draft Live. Rich Eisen back at it, running the 40 for the 20th time, benefiting St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And you can do it too. Post your 40 with the hashtag RunLikeRich, and you might be featured on NFL Network. Rhett, did you run yours yet? Did you post it? I, I am deferring to my uh, my boys this okay. year. They're going to run it for me. Okay, good, good. Mm. Uh, you can visit stjude.org slash runrichrun to donate and see Rich run on day three of the draft on NFL Network. So, DJ, what's your 40 time, and who should the Jags take at 17? <laughs> Sundial. Uh, no comment, and Tyrion Arnold, uh, the corner from Alabama, uh, who's going to fill a need for the Jags, who were not good against the pass, as Bucky knows last year, 26th in the league. They were 25th in sacks. They've made improvements to that defensive front, and here they make a big improvement to the secondary uh, with one of my favorite players in Tyrion Arnold. Yeah, love that pick. He's an outstanding press corner who also has some versatility. Should help the Jags well. So now the Cincinnati Bengals have an opportunity to really upgrade this offense by putting Brock Bowers at the wide position, surrounded by Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. If I'm Joe Burrow, I'm so excited to have a big body pass catcher in the middle. A mismatch creator and Brock Bowers is going to really lighten the load on Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and create more fireworks in Cincinnati. Mm. I well, mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah. one of the biggest wins of, of our draft, I think, right here. Yeah, if Bowers does fall to the Bengals at 18, that would be a slight slide compared to most of our NFL media mocks. Bucky and Lance have him landing in the top 10 with the Jets. DJ sent him to Denver at 12, and Rhett paired him with Indy at 15. Bucky also called him the truth at the position yes. on his article that's up right now on NFL.com. Some of the wild cards in the first Not round, false. and Brock Bowers highlights Paul that Pierce. entire nice. group, I know. <laughs> but expectations are obviously high for Bowers, especially as a fantasy football darling next season. How high will he go in fantasy drafts? It feels like there's no ceiling on that. It's something the fantasy footballers have thought about for sure. They're doing a draft special exclusively on NFL Plus right after the first round. Here's a preview from the ballers. Andy, Mike, and Jason here looking forward to joining you on NFL Plus, breaking down the big draft picks and how they impact fantasy football. And one of the big pieces of fantasy football, it's the landing spot. Mm -hmm. It's not just how athletic you are. Did you go to the right team, the right scheme? Who are some players that you think, look, if they land here, it's going to make a big difference in fantasy football? Well, I'll jump in first. Uh, the Before the draft. The Buffalo Bills gave us fantasy players a delightful treat when they opened up a spot. They traded Stephon Diggs. They traded their number one guy. This is a huge landing spot, big potential for fantasy points for a wide receiver in the draft. And I want to give a shout-out to Lad McConkey out of Georgia. He is a fascinating prospect because the, the overall production, it's not necessarily where you want it to be, and yet this guy is still being talked about like a day one or a day two pick. And the Buffalo Bills, to me, it is an absolute perfect location for this player. He absolutely destroys zone coverage. The football IQ for Lad McConkey just jumps off the screen, as well as the athleticism. But his ability to just find a perfect open spot in the middle of the field, clap his hands and say, uh, excuse me, Mr. Allen, I'm wide open. Let's make this happen. So I think that there is massive fantasy production possible should lad land in Buffalo. Yeah, one of the things you look for for landing spots is vacated targets for yes. wide receivers, vacated opportunities for running backs. That's where, for me, Jonathan Brooks, the running back who could be the first running back taken, definitely going to be a top three running back taken in this draft. The perfect landing spot for him is the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Pollard is gone. The big problem with Jonathan Brooks is just coming off an ACL injury. He had surgery, but the nice thing is the Dallas Cowboys team doctor, Dr. Dan Cooper. Oh, that's the man that performed Jonathan Brooks' surgery. Look, the Dallas Cowboys, they are down the road from Austin. They have watched Jonathan Brooks. If they invest the number 56 pick in the second round in Jonathan Brooks, that's going to be a picture-perfect landing spot for fantasy football production. And you like the opportunity. That's what you're looking for at yes. running back. You want to be able to come in and running backs, rookie running backs, they make a huge impact right out of the gate, especially every single year in fantasy. You normally have two or three of those guys that make a big impact. And I'd have to mention Brock Bowers and finding that perfect home. 
I think it's Los Angeles. I think it's with the Chargers. With Harbaugh coming in, the Greg Roman offense, we know they're going to like to run the football, but we've been there before in Baltimore mm -hmm. where Roman led a run-first offense, and yet Mark Andrews, athletic, yards after catch tight end, comes in, breaks the game wide open. They don't have Keenan Allen. They don't have Mike Williams. Brock Bowers is going to have an opportunity to be the number one target for Justin Herbert. That's a big time deal. And look, be great. Later. There's a yeah. lot more picks coming your way at the NFL draft. We're looking forward to joining you on NFL plus right after round one. Well, the fantasy footballers draft special airing exclusively on NFL plus on Thursday, following the conclusion of the first round, just go to plus.nfl.com to sign up today. Rhett, I know that you're already <laughs> signed up, so you don't have to do that right now. Can you go ahead and pick for the Rams at 19, though? Colleen, it seems I'm very uh, <laughs> geographically inclined with my picks oh. uh, in our mock draft mm. here. I'm going to keep Leatu Latu home here in Los Angeles. We're going to go from Westwood to Woodland Hills uh, here in oh. L.A. when the Rams eventually open up that new practice facility. And practice is an interesting piece of the evaluation here for Latu mm. because he has spent a lot of time in the quote-unquote lab refining his game. We feel like he's probably the most polished pass rusher poised for an instant impact playing up there on that defensive line uh, next to Kobe Turner last year's rookie sensation. Yeah, you know, it's a, an interesting pick. By the way, I did lobby for the fantasy footballers to replace Rhett on this show and was shot down by management. Wow. But they, they did a nice so job. Many shots the show. Anyway, they uh, I'm going to go pick number 20. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go pick 20 and go Pittsburgh. Uh, getting Graham Barton, uh, one of my favorites out of Duke. You see him at left tackle here. He played center earlier in his career. I think that is eventually going to be his home. Uh, this Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line has really been upgraded over last year, and now you add to it with Graham Graham Barton. Uh, they want to run the rock, and he's somebody who can climb up, get to those linebackers in space, and uh, they would love him both in the running back room and the quarterback room. Yeah, talented player. This is, uh, look, the center goes. So let's go get another center back-to-back. -back. Wow. JP okay. JPJ goes. Jackson Powers Johnson goes to the Miami Dolphins. Solidifies the interior. This is an offense that is, look, lightning in the body. You can run it on the outside. You can do all those things, but you need someone that can control it to keep the bodies off of two and talk about lower. JPJ is, look, a rock. Rock solid player at the point of attack. He certainly upgrades this offensive line and allows Mike McDaniel to play the way that he wants to play, but just have a lot of fun on the perimeter. Yeah, like that, continuing to upgrade the offensive line in front of Tua Tungabailoa as he waits for that big contract extension. And as we get to the Eagles here, Colleen, mm -hmm. at pick 22, oh, what let's you gonna fire do? up Cooper DeGene from Iowa. And, man, he does get me fired up here, whether it's, you know, at corner, picking balls off, returning them to the house, or whether he's returning punts. We just got to work on the fair catch signal, but we'll figure that out uh, in the NFL. Folks in Iowa know what, know what that's mm. all about. But, look, I just think he's got great value here. We talked about Nate Wiggins maybe being the third corner a lot, but I think Cooper DeGene, now healthy, showcasing that athleticism at his pro day. Man, it, it's time to make mm. him the 22nd pick. Yeah, nice of Rhett to finally make a pick that requires a plane ticket for the player who gets picked. <laughs> uh, next up for me, uh, I'm going to go, look, I can't believe he's there. Byron Murphy is here for the Minnesota Vikings. They've already got J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback at 11, who I don't think will be there at 11. That's a home run. And now you get someone who I think actually has a chance to go inside the top 10 to 12 picks in Byron Murphy, the best interior pass rusher who can also hold the point of attack in the run game. That is a home run pick for them at pick number 23. Well, let's think about home run picks. Let's go with the Dallas Cowboys, and let's continue to fortify this offensive line. Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. I mean, I guess you can kind of drive to Dallas. You don't need a, a plane <laughs> ticket, but look, we're going to keep him uh, close by. And the reason why, we want to make sure, look, we lose Tyron Smith in the offseason. We want to add another body to this offensive line that's athletic, that's physical, that's tough, that allows us to really protect Dak Prescott while hoping that we can enhance the running game. Tyler Guyton is a freak show of an athlete, nice and nimble, dancing bear at the point of attack. The Cowboys have to take care of that front line because when the front line is good, the Dallas Cowboys are good. A lot of ties in the first round on the offensive line. Tyler Smith, Tyron I like Smith. It. I, I like mean, you could maybe say Travis Frederick with the T. A lot of T's sure. there, sure. too. We're cruising. Pick 17 to 24. Joe Burrow gets the gift of Brock Bowers to Cincinnati. The Rams add some resources to their pass rush with Latu, while the Steelers, Dolphins, and Cowboys all build up front, fortifying their offensive lines. 
and Cooper DeGean goes from Iowa to Philadelphia. I hear they're so similar, uh, those destinations. <laughs> hey, coming up, the final picks of our mock, the Elite Eight. Will Bills Mafia be happy with Rhett's selection? And yes. DJ, you have the future pick of the defending champs. How many wide receivers go in this last tier? Stick around to find out. Welcome back to Mock Draft Live with The Real Deal. In just a few days, you can attend the 2024 NFL Draft presented by Bud Light live from Detroit in person for free. Experience the ultimate NFL Fan Festival featuring live concerts, interactive games, player autographs, and more. Visit NFL.com slash draft access to register for a free entry today. Okay, next pick is up for the city hosting the draft next season. Green Bay, Rhett, you're on the clock. Oh, let's go to Titletown and let's have a Marius Mims help us get there. The hulking offensive tackle for from the Georgia Bulldogs now going to Green Bay. Obviously, you know, there's a need there. David Bakhtiari uh, now officially gone, but, you know, has been in and out of the lineup for the last couple of seasons. They need a guy they can count on. Uh, to continue to build a wall in front of Jordan Love. You know, he's played on both sides there at Georgia, and uh, I think it immediately slide in there at right tackle and provide an upgrade. So, like Amarius Mims at 25. Yeah, that's massive human being. Absolutely massive human being. Uh, I'm up next here at 26 with Tampa Bay. Hey, look, wide receiver is not the number one need for this team, but at this point in the draft, I'm, I'm hunting value, and this is my highest rated player that's just staring me right in the face. I've got to go Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver out of LSU, who can get over the top. He tracks the ball really well. I think he's got more in the bag as a route runner that you'll see at the next level. So I'm a big fan of his game, and I like this fit with Tampa. Yeah, I like the way they're surrounding him with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. It should work out well. Another pick that should work out well is Chop Robinson going to the Arizona Cardinals. We've seen Monty Austin Ford kind of prance and dance around mm -hmm. the draft room trying to get his guy. And so he and gets a guy down at the bottom of the draft. First round, Chop Robinson, explosive athlete, super dynamic when you see his get off and bend and burst. He is a guy who has all kinds of potential as a dominant sack rusher, a sack artist. It's just about getting him in the right situation. I think Arizona is the right situation for him to flourish as a player. Especially with Zayvon Collins and B.J. Ojolari there. He wouldn't be asked to do too much right away. Um, I like that. I like that pick. All right. Well, that brings us to Smarter Picks presented by Nerd Wallet. Let's go back to 26 real quick. DJ went Brian Thomas Jr. for the Bucks yeah. at 26. So, Bucky, how do you like that fit with Baker Mayfield and the Tampa offense in general? I love it, and I love it for a few different reasons. One, for Baker Mayfield, you got a bunch of big bodies that are expanding the strike zone, so that works. Two, I like Brian Thomas has an opportunity to run behind a Hall of Fame wide receiver in uh, Mike Evans, and then he works with Chris Godwin. So he can learn a lot to expand his game, and I think there's a natural succession plan for him to be the number one in Tampa Maybe when Mike Evans decides he wants to hang up the cleats, I like the fit. I think it's terrific for the Buccaneers to make this move right now. Yeah, I think that's a great point you mentioned, you know, with Mike Evans. Great to have him back for another, you know, couple of seasons. If those are his last, Brian Thomas then would be poised to kind of step into that role. Now, that'd be big shoes to fill. A guy who's had a decade's worth of thousand yard seasons. But for right now, what this means is building with Baker mm -hmm. and taking advantage of the career year he had last year and putting another weapon in there to help him kind of continue to build on that. If Baker's your guy, again, this draft could be about supporting quarterbacks, yeah. young mm -hmm. and veteran, and that's what the Bucks do here. And that division, wide open. The Bucks yes. already, NFC South reigning uh, or defending champs, so they have things in place, and now they're just building it up more. Speaking of receivers, though, the Bills, they could absolutely use one. Rhett, you are on the clock with the 28th pick. Yeah, I, but I feel like the value is going to be better to go on the defensive side where they have some real needs in the secondary. That that group, whether it's corner and safety, they've been decimated both through, you know, just guys getting released or guys, you know, moving on and getting injured. Like, I, it's time to build up that room. Nate Wiggins helps them do that with some serious speed. Sure, there's some concerns over the frame, but I think at this spot at 28, you feel real comfortable with the value that Nate Wiggins can provide. No, I, I like it going on the corner at the corner position. I'm going to stay there and I'm going to say for a team in the Detroit Lions who were very close last year and thirsty for a championship. How about a little Kool-Aid? Uh, let's give them a corner. Hey. This is a team that's going to be playing with a lead. Get somebody that can match up on the outside. And that to me is Kool-Aid McKinstry. Look, the Texas game wasn't his best game, 
But when you, you take the body of work, this is a really good football player. Ran the mid four fours. I think the Lions get a corner and they get a good one here in Kool-Aid McKen Street. Yeah, really good corner. A guy that is terrific on the perimeter. And so let's go with the Baltimore Ravens. And we now have an opportunity to take a terrific tweener player. And that is Darius Robinson. And the reason why I call him a tweener because he can go in between being an edge defender or playing a little defensive tackle in some nickel situations. The one thing that we know about the Baltimore Ravens, they do a great job of identifying blue collar players that get it done in their defense. Darren Robinson fits the bill. This is a really solid player. Look, hard head and lunch bill. He's bringing it to Baltimore. Yeah, I feel like we've exhausted the offensive linemen that are probably going to go in the first round. I could have seen that being a pick there for the Ravens um, at 30. And at 31, maybe could have been a possibility there for the Niners as well. But instead, they're going to go with the defensive lineman, an interior disruptor, a guy who can really penetrate, you know, as a potential three technique defensive tackle right there and Johnny Newton. You kind of move him along up and down the off the defensive line, dependent on matchups. I think he's a guy that has a real future as a kind of game wrecker, a havoc mm. wreaker there mm. uh, along that defensive front for the San Francisco 49ers. So I'm into it. Yeah, and, and look, Red. I think we might be uh, we might be even too low on Johnny Newton in this exercise. Yeah. He could be long gone by that pick. Uh, I'm going to go Lad McConkey final pick here to the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl champs. What do they need? Nothing, because they have Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and give them another weapon. McConkey, look, you can play him inside, you can play him outside. We saw it at the Senior Bowl. He is such a tough cover. He's going to he's going to be able to create separation. And with Mahomes and the accuracy, I mean, mm. he will catch a billion passes with a B. Mm. Mr. Always Open with Patrick Mahomes. This is going to be a major problem for defenses if that is the way that Kansas City goes. So that is the mock. I'll let you marinate on that for a second <laughs> to remind you that the real deal is going down Thursday, 8 p.m. NFL Network and NFL Plus. Find out who's going where and follow all of the twists and turns that await. But just because your team isn't picking in the first round doesn't mean that we're ignoring them. Panthers, Texans, Browns, we're mapping out targets for round two. You're watching Mock Draft Live presented by NerdWallet. We'll be right back. Wrapping up our final mock draft together, but join DJ and I live from Detroit for his final mock, the work it's just never done. Guys, Wednesday, April 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern, Charles Davis joins us for our draft eve tradition, and you should too. Okay, so as we uh, had just alluded to, as it currently stands, a few teams without first round picks are the Panthers. They sent theirs to the Bears last year to move up for Bryce Young. The Texans don't pick until 42 after trading their first rounder to the Vikings. And the Browns' first pick comes at 54. So because we are all about all 32, let's make some uh, picks here for teams that aren't currently scheduled to draft night one. So, Bucky, what direction should the Panthers go in? Well, after Panthers watched the Chicago Bears just build around Caleb Williams, I think Dan Morgan feels compelled to give Bryce Young a little help. And so let's go Keon Coleman from Florida yeah. State being that big body wide receiver on the perimeter. Stretch, expand the strike zone, make life easy for Bryce Young to target. This is a guy that excels down in the red zone scoring touchdowns. You now have a legitimate number one receiver on the perimeter. Bryce Young should be able to cook now that he has a playmaker on the outside. Well, I like the fact you shopped at Florida State in the second round. I'm going to do the same thing for the Houston Texans at 42. I'm going to take Braden Fisk, a defensive tackle. Mm. It's a position of need. He's an excellent athlete. I think he fits right in with some nice additions they made, including Daniil Hunter in free agency. Love that one, too. Uh, I'm going to go with the Browns here at 54, taking a linebacker to uh, help pair with JOK, Jeremiah Usu koromoa I'm going to give him Peyton Wilson, a tackling machine, a stat sheet stuffer. As long as the medicals check out okay, I think the Browns get an excellent player here at 54 overall to help continue to kind of beef up their defense. Well, that's it, gang. Are you guys relieved that you got through this this mock? And it seems like you made some pretty nice picks. We're not going to project Mr. Irrelevant. We're, I mean, like, I got more in, I got more in the tank yeah, if you guys You want to stick around a few more hours? I'm, I'm here. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you Hardest catch the draft on NFL business. Network, 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. And then watch DJ with the puppies uh, day three. Yeah. That's going to be fun. <laughs>